So it's 1995, and I'm not being offered the full-time position at the student loan processing center that I was promised. I'd gone back to school for one semester to finish my degree, and when I came back, they just reneged on their promise. And like a good drama queen would, I said, well, Todd the supervisor doesn't even do his due diligence. And then I turned onto my heel and I flounced out of there. So I felt like I got my revenge on them. A couple weeks later, there's a knock at my door. I open it up and there's two women standing there and they're in these business suits and they look like Scully and Scully from the X-Files. <laughs> one of them says, is your name Patrick Cleary? And I said, yes. And she holds up a, a shield and she says, Department of Education. And I said, the first thing I said was, they give you badges? <laughs> I mean, like, I couldn't be more surprised if Betsy DeVos showed up in a tank. I was like, <laughs> Wow, so I invited them in and we all sat at the dining room table and they said, we hear that you're an informer on the student loan industry. And I was like, no, <laughs> I'm you know, an opinionated gay white man and I just didn't get a job. And they said, we understand that Todd the supervisor is not doing his due diligence. <laughs> and I said, well, okay, so like when, I didn't like Todd very much. I mean, he was much better looking than me, and I really, I li I, I really liked Todd, but <laughs> he, he didn't do his job. So, so I said, well, you know, when he would call the foreign accounts, he would just put in the computer, he would put in um, uh, uh, LMAS, which le was for left me message answering machine, and there were no phone numbers on those. And some of them he would call these accounts that we knew that the people weren't there or the people didn't live there, and he would just put left message because he was just a slacker, and we worked at this student loan company, and they said, yes, he has not been doing his due diligence. We need you to testify in front of a grand jury. <laughs> so I, um, I said, well, I, I would really rather not. Uh, <laughs> Now mind you, I'm like 24, 25 years old and I'm just like, I don't have a job and now I'm going to testify about, against my former employer in front of a grand jury. I said, no, I, I don't think that I want to do that. And they said, we can subpoena you. I said, oh, okay. Um, so for weeks and weeks, I have to go into Boston to the Department of Education and speak with some of the undersecretaries of education for the federal government talking about all of the computer codes that we used at the student loan processing company. Now, remi I'm reminding you, this is 1995 when mo most offices didn't have a computer in their office at all. And they said, we really need you to make this, uh, make, make this understandable to the grand jury. And they're just people that, you know, they've been brought in through jury duty. And I was like, oh, that's not going to happen. So, but we did. I spent, I spent a, a good number of weeks talking with them. And they brought in reams and reams and reams of paperwork. My, meanwhile, back at the student loan servicing company, word got around that I was a snitch. Now... I, these were all my friends. These were people that I had worked with for the four years between when I left school and when I went back to school. And like they were my entire social circle. And suddenly, when I would call them, they'd say, say the student loan servicing company almost said their name. <laughs> you know their name. You, you all know their name. The student loan servicing company tells us that we are not allowed to talk to you. And mind you, even today, even like 20 years later, people won't connect with me on Facebook because of this, because they think the Department of Education is going to get them. So eventually, I have to go to a federal uh, judicial building in, in the middle of Boston, has no windows. The FBI and the Department of Education is sitting there waiting with me. And I sit, and I kid you not, nine hours. I sat there and they said, okay, so what does LMAS stand for? And I'd say left message answering machine. And they said, what does uh, L-M-A-A -A, mean it's left message with the answer. All right, and how do these codes work? And then the grand jury, it, like, unlike in a regular trial, a grand jury can ask you questions themselves and they would pick it up and they'd say, this is on the computer? And I'd say, yes it is. Eventually, <laughs> now this went on forever and ever and ever. And after I left, I said, you know, what will, what's the next step in the case? And they said, oh, there is no other step in the case. Your, your time in this is done. So thank you very much, and we'll never talk to you again. And thank you for you know betraying all your friends and Ted, the supervisor. Ted, Todd, the super. His name was Todd. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So <laughs> anyway, um, 
I, I did, uh, I got to learn a lesson from the Department of Education that you don't make a big fuss during your exit interview. <laughs> but I also have a wonderful line that if anybody ever says to me, come on, man, don't make a federal case out of him, I can say, I know, I have. <laughs> Thanks very much. Give it up for Patrick.